Hello and welcome to Four Spas Downwind Sailing Seminar here on the outer downwind poles. I'm going to be referencing this brochure which is uh, online. It's one, Just click one of the yellow buttons on the Four Spa website and it follows through with what we're going to be discussing today on how to buy a whisker pole. So Four Spa manufactures many different size whisker poles. We uh, start with the dinghies obviously, just with the plastic end fittings and the small twist lock poles which you just rotate to twist and extend and then obviously the line control poles which you pull and extend we, we make full aluminum ones outer tube aluminum inner tube we make the combo which is outer tube is aluminum and the inner tube is carbon uh, this happens to be the velocity pole which is our budget carbon pole and it has an easy Finish, easy grip finish uh, and then we obviously make a deluxe carbon whisker pole as well which is full carbon and glossy finishes and a painted exterior as well so uh, the main thing with uh, choosing a whisker pole is if you, especially if you're going to mount it vertically is the toggle knuckle fitting if you use this so important to toggle and knuckle both ways and uh, if you use an inboard end fitting like a piston style you have to use this so that toggles and knuckles as well so we'll be talking about that soon thanks okay obviously uh, vertical pole storage is probably the most convenient way to store a whisker pole and there's a couple of different ways you can go here. This is the toggle style fitting, and it's uh, it's on a rubber chock. This is uh, a Beneteau 473, and it's got a uh, 1527 whisker pole. And the chock, this stops it going back to the shrouds, this rubber chock here. It's uh, US Spars, so it's got their track on it. And so I'm using their car, and we just fit our toggle pin through here, which is a half inch hole. And I've attached um, the vertical pole storage chock to it as well so it travels together when the pole goes up the top of the mast and this one is fixed on the bottom of the track and the bottom of the pole just snaps into that so this allows basically single-handed sailing uh, okay so we've just raised the vertical pole storage system Okay, so there's a various attachments at the lower end. This is probably the most simple. It's called the VPC chock and it just snaps in. It's sold in various diameters and you just match the whisker pole to that diameter. Or you can even mount one of these that is screwed into the spar with these holes here. It's called a MPC, mask chock. So um, that's a couple of different ways to store the lower end. Okay, typically um, when you're using a jaw fitting, if you didn't have a T-track, like inch and a quarter T-track or the US Spars track that I have on this Beneteau, uh, you could install an FC mast plate and that would allow you to snap in the jaw as well. Obviously this would be mounted a lot higher, but I've got the track in the way. And then we also manufacture it in a toggle knuckle arrangement where it's shaped to the spar and you can just drill and tap into your, into your spar that way. That's an easy fitting and then the toggle knuckle just clicks right in here. Yeah, the inch and a quarter T-track, the slide cars, the VPC chock, and then if you wanted to use a jaw fitting you just use the mask car here. And you can see how I've got this tied together here how it travels up with the spar so the whisker pole doesn't rock um, offshore in heavy seas and then it's snapped down here at the lower end. You could also put it down at the deck level too and just snap the jaw into that because it's always a jaw on the outboard end of the pole so you'd snap that into there. Okay another way to store a whisker pole is uh, with these deck mounted brackets. 
obviously this is the TSN fitting you can just slide that in here and uh, or if you've got a jaw you could use one of these and just click the jaw into this is our Marillon version the deck bracket as well and this is the forward deck mount piece um, that's bolted to the deck and we have a trigger fitting here so you just click it in place clicks in automatically or if you wanted to use a Marillon version this is a bit smaller and less expensive than the stainless bracket the deck chocks when using a whisker pole with a ring car like sometimes you mount it just on the spar permanently or if it's a t-track on a t-track it'll slide it's very important to use at least inch and five eight id because uh otherwise they bind they need to clear the beak fitting and uh inch and five eight will get you out of trouble because if you've got so much leverage you can crack the end fitting we don't want the pole coming down on anybody so, but these are typically not stored vertically on a spar. Okay, another way to store a whisker pole or a spinnaker pole on your staunchions is we make staunchion chocks. And there's just screws here that you pull apart. It comes over the, you snap it around the staunchion and just put the screws back in and open it up, snap the pole in, close it up. That's it, simple. And you know, both ends on two staunchions, you know, staunchion bases are about 10 feet, so it gives you a good broad length to snap in a whisker pole or a spin pole and store it easily on a staunchion as well. Okay, another key feature to sailing with a whisker pole is to rig a bridle up on the loop that's supplied by four spots to the outboard end, that eye here, and a snatch clip, you know, a snap shackle, just to the outboard end of the beak. Uh, jaws down so you can pull the sheet out if you need to when you're disconnecting but the bridle each leg would be about 20 feet long 25 feet long so uh, we do use that so that you can take the bend out of the pole because in, in real heavy conditions when it's loaded you'll see the pole bend like and then you can straighten it right out with the bridle by just easing your topping lift so that's a good feature there So thank you for watching this on how to buy a whisker pole and spinnaker pole and vertical pole storage situations. Um, it's going to be, this is going to be followed by a video of sailing downwind in Key Biscayne. So it's about a three minute video after this now. So uh, I hope you can watch that too. That'll help on sailing downwind as well. Thank you for being forced by our customers. So we have a, a bridle rigged and we have a force bar line control whisker pole here and we have a TS-125 car up there, TS fitting and a VPC chock storing it just on the mast here. So it's pretty simple. You just detach by pulling it out and Bill in the cockpit's going to hoist up the topping lift just to help us out here. And we're going to keep the jaws down. We're going to snap it onto the sheet, down with jaws down. And then we're going to come back, just hold that and pull it down. Okay, so we want it pretty level, so we're just going to keep it in the chalk here. And that's good. Just want to keep it up extended near the head so right now that the topping lifts on we simply attach or extend the whisker pole by climbing up the spar a little and just pulling on the furling line extend it and tie it off like this figure eight and the rest we'll do when we furl out the sail okay now that we got the pole set it's simple we just Ease the furling line out, wind the jib sheet in, and set it, because we want to head downwind with the whisker pole, the shortest destination. We're going to the Rickenbacker Bridge there, and we need to get there fast, so we just wind out the jib. Here we go. 
just grind it out. Holes kind of level. And that's pretty good right there, I'd say. And that's it, it's a stable, steady, wing on wing situation here. It's just straight to the bridge. But and our boat speed's, uh, it's climbing. We probably doubled our speed just with a main up. So uh, wing on wing, it's very simple, very stable, and autopilot, you can go do what you need to do. You can single hand a boat, it's a way to go.